Breaking tonight, North Korea has announced that Kim Jong-un has been briefed by his generals on a potential missile strike near the island of Guam. That announcement comes after a week of threats between the U.S. and North Korea. Last week, President Trump vowed to unleash, quote, fire and fury if the Kim regime goes too far. The president later said he possibly hadn't been tough enough on North Korea. Meanwhile, with Venezuela on the brink of civil war, Trump suggested there could be American military intervention there as well. Charles Krauthammer is an author, a columnist, an all-around brilliant person. He says the public may be missing the point of the president's threats. Charles Krauthammer joins us tonight. So, Charles, the point of a threat um, is that you have to be able to back it up. And I don't think any American president would say something like that without having in mind how he might make good on it. What would be the point of military action against North Korea or, for that matter, Venezuela? Is, is either one of those a good idea? Well, they're both separate issues, I think. The North Korea one is quite straightforward. And we heard from General Mathers, Secretary of Defense, today. Look, if the North Koreans launch a missile at the United States, at Guam, at our troops, perhaps even, he would add, at Seoul or Tokyo, our allies, we're not going to wait for it to land. The launching would be an act of war, and I assume we have plans for a complete obliteration of the North Korean regime. Now, people got all upset when Trump used the words fire and fury, overkill, and all this other stuff. They forget the fact that John Kennedy, President Eisenhower, and most of the Cold War presidents had a policy called massive retaliation, which meant if the Soviets attacked us, we were not going to be discreet and proportionate in our response. A massive retaliation was understood as code for, we're going to obliterate Russian cities. Now, that wasn't a pleasant prospect. But it was that threat that actually kept the peace for 50 years and is the reason we had no major war between the great powers for 70 years longer than any time in modern history. So there's a place for that kind of overkill threat. My problem with what President Trump said is that he said they'd have to face fire and fury if they continue their threats. The problem is the North Koreans have been threatening us insulting us, right. hurling all kinds of blood-curling stuff every day and twice on Sunday for about 50 years. It's not the threats that, you know, that we would be retaliating for. It is any action, any move to threaten our allies, ourselves, our territories. I think he needed to make that clear. But the fire and the fury, that was a perfectly reasonable recreation of massive retaliation. Have you ever seen a scenario where the U.S. uses military action against North Korea and millions don't die in Seoul? That seems such a high price to pay. Do you really think the administration is willing to risk that with military action? If we're attacked, there won't even be a question. Our response will be automatic. And there will be deaths in Seoul. But this is a city, look, it's not going to be easy. It could be evacuated. But the other part of it is that we can attack the artillery. It isn't as if, you know, this is untouchable artillery that the North Koreans have trained on Seoul. Remember the bomb that we dropped in Afghanistan, the mother of all bombs? You do a string of those, you don't have to go nuclear, and you can vastly reduce the firepower of the North Koreans. Look, I'm not trying to strategize or to play out a war scenario, but if we're attacked, the response is automatic. The question is, if we're not attacked, are we willing to push the North Koreans to the point where they right. would start a war? And that's a different question. It's a more delicate question, and it's a more morally fraught question, because you're right. Would just the idea, the threat of the North Koreans having a bomb, unused, but the capacity to hit any American city, is that enough to push us into a scenario where millions are going to die? That's not an easily answered question. And I suspect, Tucker, that in the end, if it came to that, if it was just a potential threat, a threat out there, a sort of Damocles, that we would decide to acquiesce rather right. than go to war. You would think so. That would be an awfully big deal uh, otherwise. Charles Kennedy, thank you for that. That was interesting. My pleasure.